derivation of damped oscillations. We got the expression for the displacement of, with respect to the damped case. Okay, it is the uh, displacement for the damped oscillations. We have assumed that uh, a particle, particularly if you if you take an example of a simple pendulum that is swinging in a, a medium. So it is uh, swinging in a medium means it is under the damped. So the medium, the surrounding medium provides the resistance to the motion of the particle or the simple pendulum. So therefore, as the time progress, you will find that the amplitude gets diminishing in the every cycle of oscillation, the amplitude kept on decreasing. That is because of the surrounding resistive medium. Okay. And this was the best example we have uh, observed. A man is uh, pushed the swing and the swing starts swinging. Uh, and after some time, it will come to its uh, the rest position. This is the best example, practically and observable. Uh, we have already observed uh, this uh, kind of oscillations. So now, how to define, by definition wise, how to define the damped oscillations? These are the oscillations of a body under the combined action of restoring force and the resistive forces. Because the surrounding medium provides a resistance to the motion of the particle or the body here, so it uh, uh, does not allow the medium to uh, swing or the, uh, to make oscillations easily. It uh, opposes the movement of the ball, movement of the particle. Therefore, it gives a resistive force. And there is an internal force that is uh, acting opposite to the force due to gravity that is called the restoring force. We have understood this. So over the time, the body continues to oscillate with a diminishing amplitude and finally settles into its rest position. Such oscillations are called the damp oscillations. And you have seen this yesterday also. So the, initially the amplitude was uh, larger as the time progressed in every cycle of oscillation. This uh, amplitude is slowly decreasing and decreasing and finally it will become zero. It means it has come to the rest position. See why the amplitude is getting uh, diminished uh, in every cycle of uh, oscillation? That is because it gives energy. There is a loss of energy. There is a dissipation of energy into the damping medium. As the bob moves within the, uh, the uh, makes a to and fro motion, slowly in every cycle of oscillation, some energy is given to the surrounding medium because of the friction. So it gives uh, some energy, very small amount of energy uh, because of the friction and slowly this energy being uh, completely given to the resistive medium. Therefore, finally it settles into rest position. In every uh, oscillation, in every cycle of oscillation, a small amount of uh, energy is dissipated, lost by the particle. Slowly the particle or the body is losing energy and finally settles at the rest position. So, okay. So now look at the figure, I mean uh, this one here, a video. A man has loaded uh, some weight into the spring here and it is uh, pulled down. Thereafter, it is swinging. Okay. Look at this uh, variation of the plot here. Initially, this uh, with a higher amplitude, and slowly the next cycle it is de decreasing and decreasing and so on. So you can see the oscillations are slowly decreasing. The amplitude of the oscillation slowly decreasing, and uh, it becomes zero after some time. It means it has it has attained the rest position. So this kind of oscillation are uh, said to be the damped oscillations. Okay, and. Uh, we have seen the, the earlier in the previous class, uh, we have derived the expression for the uh, displacement x. And uh, in that expression, if you re I'll write uh, this particular expression here. See, we have got this expression. This was the expression 
derived this c e to the power of minus b minus plus or minus b square minus omega square bracket t plus b into e to the power of minus b minus b square minus omega square close bracket this this is what the expression for the displacement this this is the display look at this displacement so this represents the displacement x so now here in this displacement uh, here this displacement as the time varies with respect to the time p here with respect to time p it is varying with root of b square minus omega square so the nature of the displacement depends on the variation of square root of b square omega square with time p okay then uh, we have three specific cases why it is uh, i said it uh, varies uh, i mean the nature of uh, the displacement varies as a square root of b square omega t because i can have these values of b and omega square so the, what is this b b is the surrounding medium the damping due to surrounding medium and this is the frequency natural frequency when this value of b square is greater than omega square we call it as the over damping or sometimes it is also called the heavy damping in some books you might see that it is heavy damping also both are same over damping and heavy damping both are same similarly here if b square is less than omega square it is called the under damping it is sometimes also called the light damping so if you observe the variation of x with the conditions b square omega square and if you plot the variation of x with time p you will find this black curve look at this black this black curve you will find it here the variation of x is slowly decreasing this is slowly decreasing and i will find that it will not oscillate here here this is not oscillating slowly the value of x is decreasing when you look at the blue curve with respect to the under damping case you see that it is oscillating like this way center it is oscillating so under uh, uh, for b square greater than omega square the particle does not oscillating it is slowly decreasing its amplitude and finally becomes the minimum value okay in the critical damping case that is in the second case b square omega square there is a again there is exponential decrease i mean they, sorry it is uh, decreasing in this way in the red curve and uh, when you compare to the end point here this is the let us say the end point and somewhere this is the end point for the over dam and this is for the critical dam so now in case of critical damping it is uh, uh, coming to the main portion or the rest portion much quicker so this is the quickest way to attain the uh, equilibrium portion when b square is omega square the particle very soon comes to the rest position we we'll see that all those things in the uh, theory okay so we, we have three possible cases what are they that is b square omega greater than omega square b square is equal to omega square b square less than omega square these are the three possible cases and we have seen that the variation of the displacement or a uh, damped uh, oscillations uh, depends on the square root of over b square minus omega square as the time varies as the time increases okay so now uh, we have see this uh, seen that uh, that is over damping case so that is the heavy down it is also called heavy damping this heavy damping is uh, sometimes useful also this is uh, not sometimes many times it may be useful also okay here because of the extra damping heavy damping uh, if you have already observed uh, uh, in the uh, like uh, in offices there are door closers isn't it you have observed there are door closers some uh, attached to the door when I mean, you push the door and leave it uh, the door will not uh, uh, crash into the 
it will not uh, immediately shut shut down isn't it? it slowly closes okay they are the door, door closes so i mean i mean to say that i have observed in offices uh, in the principal chambers etc a door closer is attached to the door uh, to provide an additional damping these door closers provides an additional damping so that when you push the door uh, or you just leave it it will not uh, crash into its original position it will not uh, suddenly immediately comes to the uh, rest position it slowly comes to its uh, rest position we have observed that uh, this door closers uh, in the atm uh, drawing uh, uh, this uh, centers or we maybe we have observed uh, in uh, uh, shopping malls uh, big glass doors were there, there. Uh, and uh, when you push the door and leave it it slowly closes it will not uh, crash to its uh, uh, rest position isn't it so because of there is an additional damping is provided uh, for the movement if we don't have the door closers it will immediately comes and closes and uh, because of the glass uh, doors it may break up isn't it so we are providing some additional damping heavy damping so that particle slowly comes to the mean uh, rest position without being further oscillating or moving with that okay or you can observe uh, the moving of a pendulum in a viscous fluid when you drop the pendulum into the viscous uh, fluid uh, that is in case of an oil it will simply slowly stops it without being oscillating further okay so the second case is a uh, uh, critical damping i am explaining here uh, with respect to uh, these different kinds of uh, damping and uh, the three different cases here and thereafter i'll go to the theory right now i'm just briefing what uh, they are really mean okay the second case uh, is the the critical damping in this critical damping you see that it is a shortest uh, period uh, uh, where the particle will uh, uh, come to the mean position okay here and the critical damping it is just sufficient to allow the object to return to the rest position okay the damping that is provided to the particle is just sufficient so that the particle will come to the rest position in a short interval of time okay and uh, this uh, a example you can see in the shock observers after this critical damping explanation I, with a uh, i'll explain this with respect to the shock observers when coming to the third case uh, that is under damping so in the under damping you have seen that uh, the particle can make uh, the vibrations uh, or the oscillations to and fro about a uh, the fixed position, uh, point because of the damping provided uh, by the particle is uh, comparatively lesser the vibrations of a system gradually tap tapers to zero here and takes a longer length of time uh, you can imagine uh, when you push the pendulum in air it slowly swings and uh, attains the equilibrium position okay so now let us come to the theoretical part so now uh, uh, this is the now the first case is the uh, case of over damping it is also called heavy damping i told you it is also defined as heavy damping the example look at this uh, the example the door closes these are the door closes attached to this uh, when you uh, push the door and you can simply go walk uh, walking the door slowly closes uh, by itself without banging to these uh, walls okay so it simply come and uh, settle to the uh, its uh, rest position it won't bang here okay without being oscillating it is comes to the rest position here this uh, door closers provides an additional damping for this uh, door otherwise it will simply bang the uh, door corners okay so it will not happen so this is the example for an over damping case and uh, we have seen this uh, this expression we already did this expression this is a displacement for uh, in case of damped oscillation this expression we have observed and uh, here look at this in the denominator here d by root of d square minus omega square 
what we are saying that for a damping uh, uh, case b square is greater than omega omega square this is the condition for over damping when this b square is greater than omega square what happens to this uh, b square minus omega square if you take simply b square minus omega square it becomes negative because b is large b is large and uh, minus there okay so uh, this is uh, if you take the square root of that it is less than b because b is more uh, subtracting it when you compare to that the b is becomes less isn't it so this is negative this becomes negative if this value is less than b this b look at this b square minus because b is greater and minus omega square the difference is smaller value that is within the square root so this overall is smaller than b isn't it therefore when you look at this exponent it is simply the negative it will become a negative quantity under this condition b square omega square the exponent is negative so now the exponential is negative then uh, uh, i write this expression i to remember recall re, to recollect what has been done this is the expression minus b okay sorry this is plus and something is there plus b e to the power of minus b and minus root isn't it so this term is negative overall this will become negative b e is negative plus d e to the power of negative value so what is this term since uh, this is negative the displacement of cos ex exponentially negative so it uh, drips i mean uh, drops exponentially okay the displacement x drops exponentially that is why this plot okay so the displacement is dropping exponentially because of the root of b square minus omega square compared to b becomes less therefore since this minus b will dominate and uh, the exponent is negative in both the cases therefore the displacement x is uh, decreases as the time uh, proceeds okay therefore in case of uh, heavy damping or over damping the particle the displacement in the particle is uh, decreasing exponentially without being further oscillating it simply comes and stops there so suppose if you look at this here uh, this, uh, this is the viscous fluid i consider your viscous fluid example you take some oil and this is the pendulum you draw i wait you drop it so the moment you drop it it will slowly come and uh, and simply attains it will not go uh, swing over there okay without being oscillating extra it will simply slump it will simply fall to its rest position very soon okay exponentially okay so due to the reason that is display uh, the reason displacement x continuously decreases and uh, without being oscillating it will settle into equilibrium position we say that the body after passing through the maximum displacement it simply slumps to the equilibrium position without being further oscillating so the oscillations won't be there it will ceases to oscillate it simply uh, suddenly comes almost exponentially comes to equilibrium position without being oscillating So the example I have given the door stoppers and the pendulum here. When you drop this pendulum in a highly viscous fluid, it immediately rests to its equilibrium position without further oscillating. Okay, this is the heavy damping. Discussing the critical damping case, uh, uh, this is the expression for uh, the critical damping. Uh, V 
this expression for critical damping uh, and uh, we had uh, the expression uh, like uh, x is equal to c e to the power of some torque plus d e to the power of some torque isn't it so here this b square omega square when you put uh, is equal to equal uh, that is uh, theoretically it is set omega square is equal to equal when you put equal the something divided by z, uh, this zero becomes infinity is not uh, so possible practically okay therefore there is a small difference between them that is uh, not zero i can uh, have this small i can call this small difference by epsilon not epsilon and i substituted this epsilon over here this i call this epsilon okay then uh, this uh, therefore minus b and plus epsilon this this is c this already c and this is b okay so i have this expression e to the power of minus b plus epsilon into t plus d e to the power of minus p minus e epsilon into t it can be simplified to this uh, thing that e to the power minus b t c of e epsilon t plus d e of epsilon minus epsilon t here since epsilon is small we have uh, this epsilon is a small quantity isn't it so the small quantity uh, the exponent of small quantity is uh, again a small value okay exponent is a uh, small quantity overall because it's very small this is a small quantity it can be expressed in in terms of a series i'll explain this in the next slide i'll show how i'll get these expressions right now we just observe since it's epsilon is very small it can be ex expanded using the exponential series and uh, in this way and when you use this here and you will get i'll get finally this expression i'll show this expression okay we'll just understand uh, the physics and thereafter i can get you how to derive these expressions so what we are observing here is that for a critical damping case x is equal to uh, some e to the power minus bt within the brackets please plus qt here the x is the displacement exponentially decreasing as with minus bt okay here look at this diagram therefore in the red one here the exponentially decreasing okay and it is not uh, going as a over damp case why because this is also adding this p and this will also contributes to uh, this overall displacement so initially the x was uh, that is uh, decrease in the value of x was uh, uh, progressing and uh, it becomes smaller and smaller as you uh, go uh, for uh, as the time permits okay as uh, as the time increases as time progress initially x was a bit larger and slowly it becomes smaller we can see that in the next line the derivations okay so i'll show you this uh, derivation I'll, i'll get you this derivation how it is done okay so now what we had for critical damping for critical damping p square is equal to omega square okay we had x is equal to c e to the power of minus b plus b square minus omega square into t plus b e to the power of minus b minus b square minus omega square into t okay practically for practical purpose we can't have exactly equal they are slightly equal so means there is a small difference therefore this p square minus omega square is not zero okay let us call this as a small difference let call the root of b square minus omega square 
by a quantity called epsilon. Then I can write x is equal to c constant e to the power of minus b plus sub epsilon. Okay, outside it is b plus b minus b again minus epsilon here because of this epsilon into t. Okay. So now I can uh, re split uh, this uh, above expression as c e to the power of minus b t and exponent of minus I mean epsilon t. Similarly, d here e to the power of minus b t e to the power of minus epsilon into t. I can do this way. Here this e minus b t is common factor. Therefore, I write it as minus, I take out as a common factor. I have C exponent of this and D exponent of minus epsilon T. I can write this way. Okay. So now uh, it was, uh, since uh, epsilon what uh, smaller, epsilon is smaller, I can express this ex uh, the exponent series is ET is equal to 1 plus epsilon t by 1 factorial is epsilon t square by 2 factorial that's how the series goes e to the power of x series epsilon t this is cubic cube by 3 and so on since epsilon itself is very small the higher orders this can be neglected higher orders can be neglected then it is only 1 plus epsilon t. Similarly, e to the power of minus epsilon t, I can write the 1 minus epsilon into t. Okay, so now I substitute for these two quantities. Therefore, x is equal to some e to the power of minus bt c 1 plus epsilon t plus d epsilon, sorry, d, 1 minus epsilon d. So I can still uh, uh, defer, def, uh, further uh, simpl can be simplified, minus d t. Are you understanding the derivation? Because in the examination, you have to do these derivations. So it is c plus d plus epsilon t into c minus t. We will get this. And finally, we call this, I call this p and qt. What is p? p is c plus d. q is epsilon, uh, epsilon into c minus t. Here, p is c plus d, p is c plus d, and q is uh, that is epsilon into c minus t. So I represented p and q uh, this by this values. See that look at this expression x. So here in x, x as a time progress, as time progress, because t is a time, as time progress x is initially decreasing fast and uh, it, uh, thereafter e minus bt takes over. What is happening here? Initially x is decreasing fast because of because of qt because directly proportional isn't it? So and d minus uh, uh, minus b t means that value is smaller initially. As the time progress, uh, x is initially decreasing and uh, at, uh, uh, I mean, decreasing fast because of qt. And uh, e minus b t will take over later, uh, later on, will take over. So therefore, it is it was like this. Initially, it was slowly decreasing. 
and because of the e slowly decreasing because of e by t will take over as a time progress so it goes like that okay this is for critically damping case understood okay So now uh, we'll uh, so you see that this is what we have. I'm sorry, that's what I have de uh, derived here. X is e minus t, and I consider c plus t t, and this is q. So x is e to the power minus v t plus uh, that's how it is, it is taken. As the time progress t, q t adds, isn't it, significantly to the exponential quantity, decreasing values of e by t. E to the power minus V. Therefore, a critically damped system approaches equilibrium fast as possible. I told you uh, while well, briefly describing the critical damping case, it is the shortest uh, uh, duration where the particle at, uh, attains the equilibrium position. This is the condition where the particle attains the equilibrium condition at the shortest time without being further oscillating okay this is a uh, uh, see that desirable in uh, uh, any application of uh, mechanical and the electrical applications one of the mechanical uh, application was the, the, the concept of uh, critical damping used this shock absorbers and that uh, concept of uh, this critical damping uh, used in, uh, in the galvanometers also okay we will see that so, critical damping is a useful quantity in designing uh, the instruments, electrical instruments like galvanometer and voltmeters. It is also, the concept is also employed in designing the shock absorbers for the uh, motor vehicles, you know, the scooters, cars, etc. They have been provided with the shock absorbers, you know, these shock absorbers. I'll explain in the next slide. So now, uh, this is, uh, I said, uh, the critical damping the concept is used in the galvanometer voltmeter. So, isn't it? See, this is our galvanometer that you use in the laboratory. What happens, uh, what you observe uh, in that uh, galvanometer or the voltmeter or the ammeter, when you switch on the such a meter, the power supply, this voltmeter slowly moves to the, the required uh, point. And the, say let us say the car circuit is providing five, five volts this meter this uh, pointer slowly moves to the point five here and stops there it will not overshoot directly over there isn't it as the you switch on uh, when you want to see the voltage it slowly it moves and attains because uh, the energy you see this is a, here inside you got the springs this has been provided the springs connected to this pointer is connected to the springs okay so as soon as switch on the current the, it receives energy immediately it receives energy and the this needle here slowly dissipates energy so that it kept kept on moving to the uh, pointer somewhere here or when you switch off the voltmeter, it will not fall back immediately to the zero. It slowly comes and uh, attains the uh, this uh, nil position or the uh, null position. Why? Because slowly it is giving energy. It is uh, as you see in the graph without being oscillating. But one thing you should remember that in case of uh, the damp, uh, I mean, uh, heavy damping case and the critical damping case the particle do not oscillate it do not oscillate slowly comes attains the equilibrium position okay here this is a shock observer you have seen that in a bike this is a shock observer when you run this bike over any hump okay suddenly uh, this will uh, take into action so it, it gets uh, swung it goes under swinging action isn't it slowly the energy is dissipated and the one who's sitting on the bike won't feel the shock of the bump 
that is uh, coming in between the uh, traveling what i am going to say that say for example you are riding a bike on a very bad road conditions and there are many humps in between and when you run the your bike for such a hump if the scooter or the bike is provided with a good set of shock absorber observers will not feel this shock that is will not feel the pain of uh, this uh, jumping over this shock okay because the springs there in the shock absorb will not uh, give the energy it will not release the energy immediately it slowly releases the energy slowly it comes to the equilibrium position without being further uh, getting oscillated if there is a good uh, uh, shock absorber with the new one we don't feel the pinch of this uh, jump suppose uh, many times after using for so many years you will feel that uh, uh, as you ride such a bike uh, because it is running over the bumps you will feel uh, yourself uh, the pain when it's jumping over isn't it in such cases you need to change the shock absorbers so in shock of the shock absorbers energy slowly given and and slowly the system will attain to the equilibrium position okay so where the critical uh, damping uh, will uh, play okay next the third case it is the case of under damping what is that under damping in case of under damping we know that it is uh, b square less than omega square b square is less than omega square when you say b square is less than omega square this is less when you take the subtraction is less and uh, since it's all uh, okay so then uh, this within the root this is smaller b is already smaller it is just like uh, subtracting uh, 8 with uh, 10 minus 10 if you subtract 8 with minus 10 what do you get you get minus 10 so that is negative so this quantity is negative so this quantity is negative how to solve this i uh, will convert this to positive with uh, i i'll change this uh, b square minus omega square to omega square minus b square then say uh, this is like this way. okay so negative it is right now it is minus one into the bracket of omega square minus b square it is like this the minus one is i here therefore it is written as i into b square over the square and it is called ib okay we introduce a new constant here that is beta is equal to b square sorry omega square minus uh, b square minus omega square so it is b square minus omega square Okay, this I will be theta is equal to b square minus omega square because uh, this negative quantity minus one will come because this minus one will come we take out that minus one outside and we call this beta this is called beta now we call this beta negative sign will come out as I yeah, this I so now if you solve further this expression we will arrive at this expression okay it can be arrived at x is equal to e to the power minus bt some amplitude sine of bt plus delta now this uh, variation of x is varying as a function of sine of uh, this term isn't it so here in the case of 100 damping we have the particle that makes a two and fro motion Okay, it is oscillating about a mean position. In the other two cases, it won't oscillate. Here, because of sign of this, and uh, the, this is the amplitude, this amplitude term, it will oscillate as a sine function. Okay, this will be amplitude. As the time progress, amplitude also decreases exponentially, resulting in the damping of vibrations. Damping results in the damping of the I mean slowing uh, slower the amplitudes slowly amplitude decreases 
the best example you can observe that uh, motion of a pendulum in air so suppose this is the pendulum you leave it oscillate okay it, it oscillates so this is the example for critical damping okay is that clear i can show you how to get this uh, derivation a case three here that is uh, under damping okay so that is b square less than omega square therefore x is equal to c e to the power of minus b plus this will become i beta we already seen that okay because of short of time i'll simplify this minus b plus i beta i already explained this i how it is i beta okay so i can uh, simplify this c e to the power of minus bt dot e i beta t plus b e to the power of minus bt into e to the power of i beta t okay so this is c equal to e to the power of e i mean i beta t into c sorry it is a uh, uh, here it is it i take it is where minus beta i take common factor plus e to the power of minus i beta t into d so this can be written as minus bt okay we express this in terms of cos theta plus i sin theta therefore is cos of i beta t plus i sin i beta t i mean i beta t i beta okay i sin i beta t plus uh, here with respect to this i can write cos of minus uh, uh, beta uh, cos beta t minus of i sin i beta t isn't it sorry i i is not there because beta t beta t. sorry this is not i not there bracket this bracket so this bracket okay expressing cos beta e to the power y theta is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta no that way. so i have here right now e to the minus b t cos of beta t this c here because c is there here it is c into c here okay and here into t okay become c plus d then uh, i sin of beta d beta t c minus b in that this way let the c plus d and uh, i into i mean this uh, uh, c minus d i take it as uh, let C plus D, some amplitude, a little cos of, I take sine of delta, A sine, some, sorry, uh, this is equal to some sine delta, and uh, I C minus D is equal to some cos delta. To use this here, I can write x is equal to e to the power of minus uh, dt cos of dt plus I mean, sine delta plus sine of and cos delta then x is equal to e to the power of minus dt are you following 
some uh, this this uh, this will be the common factor. So this common factor is taken out. Sign of dt plus delta. Ultimately, what we got is x is equal to e minus bt some amplitude sine of beta t plus delta. This is amplitude and is sine. Therefore, the variation of x is going this way. Okay. The amplitude. This is the amplitude. Understood? So look at this uh, comparison of three different cases. What is this? Uh, right now we have done that is the uh, heavy damping that is B square less than omega square here. Okay. Look at this. It is swinging, having an amplitude. And this is for critical damping. Okay. Look at uh, this uh, in critical damping. Uh, uh, look at this moment of the bow here. Yeah. It, look at this. Uh, just observe now, right? Observe now. So it is slowly coming, and this the variation is this way. Here it's still going over there. In this third case, it is still going there. This is b square less than omega square. So these are so. This one, uh, the first diagram is the one last we have uh, concluded. That is the uh, under damping. And under damping, uh, the particle executes to and fro motion for a long length of time. And you compare these two. Here, this is the critical damping. Second one is the critical damping. It is a shortest. Look at the now, it will come now. See now, the particle come and stack. But still, it is moving in this third case. So it is still slowly going there. So the particle is taking long time over here. And this is shortest. This is the shortest. Okay. This is a, compared to this, this is the longest. And this will swing. So in these two cases, there is no swinging. It will not oscillate. Slowly decreases, it stops now. And it's slowly going further and further. It takes longer time without being oscillating. So the first one is, uh, this is the under, uh, under damping. Under damping. This is critical and this is over damping. Understand? Understood? Yes, sir. You will stop at uh, this uh, comment because almost 12 o'clock. Well, all of you message your uh, seat number into the chat box. I'll take the attendance. Don't uh, leave the class uh, without being uh, this one. Your, your, your sin is uh, pasted into the chat box.